Hi everyone, thank you so much for clicking to watch today's video. If you're new here, my name is Sandy and on this channel we talk about pursuing a career in interior design and I give you home decor tips. Today's video is on the career side because we are learning all about different softwares and websites that designers use for floor plans, mood boards, project management, 3D rendering, all of it. If that is of interest to you, stick around. Our first one is going to be Canva. This one's not a secret anymore. It's an oldie but a goodie. It's just, it works. You can use Canva to create your mood boards, similar to something like this that I created. If you want to know how to do these, I actually have a YouTube video here about how I made these types of mood boards. So you can go check that out. Canva is free. There's even a paid option that takes the background off of, um, different images that you're trying to pull in when you're trying to do your mood boards. And if you don't want to use the paid version or you want to sign up for the free version, but still want to get rid of backgrounds in this video, I give you a tool and a site that you can go to, to get rid of those backgrounds for free so that you can still upload them into Canva and create these kinds of boards. Here we have a good old Photoshop. We all know Photoshop. So not everyone has Photoshop and it is complex to say the least to use. It definitely has the most capabilities as far as concept boards and mood boards and that kind of thing go. Um, but not everyone is able to kind of create their own thing from scratch. So I would actually recommend trying something like, um, trying something similar to an Envato elements like this. So you can go into the site and buy these kinds of templates. So for example, this is a, this is a mood board right? And they have this pegboard in the back and everything's clipped and it looks really cool. This stuff really is going to be Photoshop that can help you create these custom looks. If we go into just, if you just go into mood boards here, you're going to be able to see all these different mock-ups that people have for how they create their mood boards. Like this stuff, it looks like it's taped on a wall or you can even do Instagram things on here. It's template so that way you're not starting from scratch but you would then sign up for the site download it and then start your mood board in photoshop photoshop is definitely probably the best one for creating something the most custom but i wouldn't say it's a hundred percent necessary you can definitely use canva or the next one i'm about to go for which is melanote is a great tool for those of us who are just getting started who want something to use for free and aren't like advanced enough for Photoshop yet. So Milanote lets you do so much. You can do to-do lists, you can do your concept board, your mood board, a board like this, you can draw, sketch, it creates color palettes for you, which I really appreciate. And you can add in little videos. It's just like having a big whiteboard, but online. I really, really like that. So this is actually a concept board that I created for I, um, for a client here and I could just scroll to the side, like endlessly. I love that. Keep going, keep going. And if I had more, then I could do more here. I love how I can add these, these little, um, to-do lists. I went and I ordered samples for this project and you can talk to people. So somebody could reply to me here and, you know, say whatever they needed to say. Uh, and then I also will use it kind of sometimes like a dumping ground a little bit. This is all the links of things that I'm thinking about using for this room. So I just kind of put them at the bottom. If I was going to present this to a client, as you would see in um, my video, I already posted the video about how to make this mood board. So you can go in and look at that, but I probably wouldn't have this at the bottom for where I'm presenting to a client. And if you want to communicate with your client in here, I would recommend making a copy of this and then sharing the, the one that is less messy with the client and then keeping this one for you and your team. So you can go back and forth about things like this to-do list, for example. Moving on to different sites and softwares that help you create your floor plans. So, Canvas is super cool. I first found out about this tool on a podcast. It is an interior design podcast called The Shays Lounge. I have a video on different podcasts I listen to for interior design that are super good for me to like learn new design info. Then I worked at a firm that actually used this tool and I was like, oh, cool. I heard about this. Um, and honestly, it's pretty great. So if you, you, you can use it for three different things, right? You can scan, just scan a room so that you have measurements and things to refer back to. And it's called Canvas, not Canva. So this is different, it has an S. And the way the scans work is how this is here. You use an iPad or your phone and you scan a room and it looks like this. 
on the iPad or on a computer because it because it generates a link so that you can go and look into a space. And what what its capabilities are supposed to be able to do, you're supposed to be able to go in here, scan this, create it into a floor plan, and then you should import it into CAD, build it out as a floor plan, or you can as a 2D drawing, and then you can do it into SketchUp and you should be able to get a 3D drawing out of it. I, for mo most designers that I've talked to about who use this, don't really trust it in terms of the building a 3D model out of the scan. They usually will use it as a reference for measurements and then have someone else manually build it out. I've heard the capabilities are a little weird, like it'll turn a window into a door and, and that kind of stuff like that, which is why it's great to have this scan to refer back to, right? You can zoom in on here, you can see what's what. This is great if you hand it off to somebody else and go here, build this. That just seems to be more accurate from what I've what I've seen designers use it for. I would also consider pricing. So this is generally a tool I've seen used by firms that are making at least like 10K a month. It doesn't seem to necessarily be worth it for people who are just, just, just getting started in their business, unless you want to use the scans for free and then you can give someone the scans to build out the model or you can build out the model yourself with the scans. Because the, the measurement of the scans is actually pretty accurate and it's great to see the details that you need to see. Like, oh, the ceiling actually drops here or hey, the, um, you know, the, the wainscoting actually goes up this high. That's great and that's free. But to turn it into a 2D plan, it's 10 cents per square foot. And then to turn it into a, you know, a 3D plan is 15 cents per square foot. So just in terms of thinking about how much that would be like, say you're doing a space that's like 1200 square feet, which isn't a large space at all. Let me see. Let's pull out the calculator. So pulling out the calculator, let's say we're doing a space that's 1200 square feet. So that's 10 cents times 1200 which is going to be 120. So that's $120 for just a floor plan. And there are sometimes, or just like the basement of a home is 1200 square feet. So you, this could get pricey if you're doing a house that's like 30,000 square feet or something like that, something really gigantic. Um, you know, and you want to multiply that, um, you're paying $300 for just the floor plan. And then if you're adding on more, once you get into doing this 3D model. So if you're just getting started out and you're only charging a couple hundred bucks for your service, this just isn't cost effective for you, but the scan would definitely be helpful and it's free. So check out Canvas. This is a very, very, very helpful tool if you are interested in going in the 3D route of really building out these things. Now we're going over Planner 5D and Home Styler. These are very similar. Honestly, there are very minor, minor differences between them. They're kind of, you know, equal in terms of whichever one you want to go with, whatever your style is. But these I recommend to when you're getting started because you don't have to download a software. You use the website and all your work is saved in the individual websites. This one has a cool plan where you upload your floor plan. So you have, and then right here, it'll turn it into this digital version. So like when you go on websites, you go on um, apartment websites and you can see the floor plan. It's kind of similar to that situation. It'll up, it'll upload it for you like this, and then you can go in and customize it. And this is similar to how it works. So you upload your floor plan, it recognizes it, then it builds it just like this for you, and you can go in and customize it however you need to customize it. I do like their website. I think it's very friendly in terms of like user you know, user easiness and, you know, user friendliness. Um, and you just get these very professional images, very professional way of communicating with your client. If you don't know all the fancy softwares like SketchUp and stuff yet, we'll get into those here for home styler. Uh, I don't know if they have this feature. I feel like they probably do because I don't use these sites that often, but you can both start, start on both of them for free. Design your home in 3D. You can go in and create a floor plan. These systems are actually much easier to use than SketchUp. I know I've said that before, but as someone who has actively still learning SketchUp and I've done, I've played around with these as well, it's just so helpful. Drag and drop furniture in, showing your client, hey, this is what I'm thinking. It, it just makes you look so professional when you can do things in 3D. 3D is always definitely the best way to go. It's just so time consuming. They also have all these classes and you can look at it on different devices. I feel like this means that you can look at it in an oculus mm, that'd be kind of cool this would be new for me 
but you probably need a project for us to start that. But the fact that you get you can start it for free. They have all these different classes, beginners are showing you their features. It's really, really, really friendly to help you learn what you need to learn. Definitely a cool site to get started in. Um, and I really appreciate how there's doing renderings and then there's making it look more realistic. So like this is a render that they populated, right? They're doing lighting and creating shadows, but then it can look like this. Or you can make it look more polished like this thing is doing and just make it look like this. So much more polished, so much more finished. Love it. And this, I suspect, has a very similar case of capabilities. They also have a space to get ideas. The pricing format is very similar. You can see work done by other people. It's just cool. And there are tons of tutorials on these things either online or on their actual site. So definitely check out these two if you're just getting started but you want to offer some kind of 3D service or just play around with it on your own. Now we are getting into uh, the big girl tools <laughs> or the big boy tools, whatever you want to call them. These are the real deal. This is what professionals are using. This is what engineers are using, architects, plumbers, electricians. This is what you take classes on in school. We're going to go into AutoCAD, Revit, and we're going to go into SketchUps. AutoCAD and Revit are the ones that you're going to take classes on. Not all schools teach SketchUp and I'll explain why. AutoCAD is a 2D tool mostly. It does say that there are 3D uh, options as well, but from everyone I've ever worked with that uses AutoCAD, they use it for floor planning. So when you see like big blueprints, um, they're made in this kind of program, if not this exact program. Um, one of the reasons you'd want to use something like an AutoCAD as opposed to the Home Styler or the five, Planner 5D that I spoke with, if you're doing a large project, like a commercial project, um, you know, you're, you're doing a, a high rise building or a hotel or whatever, the builders and people that you're working with are using this kind of software. You want to speak the language that your people speak because it's going to it's going to help you things not get lost in translation. It's going to make the communication between you easier if you're using the exact same tools that they're using. Um, and AutoCAD and Revit are both under the umbrella of what is called Autodesk. So the, the service itself is called Autodesk the, or, the, or the product. And then they have a bunch of different tools underneath. AutoCAD is the floor plan kind of tool. And there are whole classes that you will take on this. And then Revit is the 3D building tool. They are pricey. So AutoCAD runs you into, um, well, these different tiers, depending on how you want to pay. And then for students, I believe there's a different price. They also have a 30-day free trial. Same thing for Revit, the prices are a little different. It does a bit more, so it's a bit um, more complicated. You can do, I believe, floor plans in here, but most people don't. Uh, they use the thing for the thing that it was built for. CAD, good for floor plans. Revit, good for the other thing. So these, the way it, one of the reasons it's so great is because it has all these different kinds of presets as well in it. If you just look at AutoCAD, <laughs> I mean, this looks more complicated <laughs> than the other things I was showing you. Um, when you're taking a class on it and you really hunker down, you know how to use it. It really is helpful. And because this, these tools are more universal, this is more what people are using in, in, in their offices. When you learn how to use AutoCAD or Revit or SketchUp, which we're going to get to, that's a sellable skill. So even if you know nothing else about design, but you can do this, people will hire you for just this. One, it's a pain. Other people don't want to learn to do it. And two, it's just time consuming. There are people at firms who, even though they know all the other stuff, they just do this and that's their assigned thing. So if you can learn the software, kudos to you. Um, it is, it's challenging to learn, but once you have it down, you have it down, you know? It's one of the, but it can be one of those user or loser things because they do update quite often. Going into Revit, I mean, let's just take a look at this, something like this. I'm gonna, what? I'm going to, turn off the volume but this scene behind her not real this these cars driving not real <laughs> all of this is done in Revit it's insane when you're when people are de developing like urban design and they're like oh we're gonna build these cities and we're gonna do this like this this software helps you create stuff like this it's it's amazing if they're gonna do a stadium clearly this looks like a stadium 
So it's not just for homes, you know? That's insane. You can you can get all the reflections, all the plants, all the people walking. You can do all of that kind of stuff in Revit. It's really, really freaking cool. It's super intense. But when you're trying to convey projects that are hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, you definitely want every detail thought of. And this kind of software allows you to think about those things. So uh, this is one of the reasons that there are separate classes on this and the AutoCAD because this is what the professionals are using. Now we're gonna go into SketchUp. SketchUp is the one I'm actually currently learning how to use <laughs> and they have tons of amazing trainings. They also are much cheaper. So if I go into, um, let's just compare all features. If you go in here, you're get, it's gonna be $300 a year. That's, that is much cheaper than the others that were like, you know, $1,500 a year, similar to that pricing. They, uh, it's very similar to Revit. I kind of almost kind of feel like it's a more user friendly Revit. It doesn't necessarily have all the same capabilities, but when I, but it has everything that you would need. If you're someone watching this video, it has all the things that you would need in terms of like, um, rendering it out, building your floor plan, building up the walls, moving things around, adding texture. And then there are lots of like extra plugins and things for um, SketchUp that can make it look more realistic. And then you can export your SketchUp and add it to Photoshop and add more features to it. Like there's just so much that you can do. Visualizing your ideas. Uh, when you really get this down, super, super helpful. I really, really um, have enjoyed learning to use it. I'm still not 100% yet, not 100% confident in my skills, but this is worth it. It's much more cost effective. What I will say about all three of these is that your computer needs the capabilities. AutoCAD, Revit, SketchUp, your computer needs to be able to support uh, these because they're software. So it's not like you go online like Homestyler or Planner 5D, those you need Wi-Fi to be able to access. You actually don't even need Wi-Fi to be able to access these. Unless you're trying to do a plugin, some of the plugins might require it. But these are, this is just a software on your computer similar to like how Photoshop would be or a video editor like Premiere Pro or something would be and you have access to it and you're able to do this. I know that it, they crash. <laughs> these things crash a lot. The computer that you need to use for these is generally expensive. The software itself is up there in price. Like it's just, it's not the most cost effective for people who are just starting out. Um, but SketchUp is probably the most user-friendly out of all of them. And I believe SketchUp is owned by Google, I think. Um, this is, I would start with SketchUp first um, and then move your way to the others. But if you're in school, you are gonna start with the others first. In school, they normally teach CAD and Revit. And then there are tons of, like I said, add-ons and plug-ons and things to help you render and get like a crisper look. So this is a render, but you can tell this isn't actually a photograph. There are renders that I can't even tell that it's not a photograph because the the add-on to it and the textures and the details I've been paid so much attention to that it looks like perfect. I'm like, is that a photo? What? Oh my God. Um, someone just made that up and, you know, on the internet and now I'm looking at it and it looks like I could actually go in there and sit down because it's so realistic. And like I say, at the end of all of my videos, if you like it, put a ring on it and hit that subscription. Don't, don't be out here playing the field, okay? Commit to me, me and you. Beyonce said, if you like it, put a ring on it. I say, if you like it, subscribe. So hit me with my ring and hit that subscription below. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> bye.